Hey guys, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool minimal illustration effect. I got inspired. I found an image online from one of the mock-up sites I usually get posters and stuff from. And I found this image and I decided to recreate it. And this is what I created. I used a blue palette with just simple shadows and a grain effect all within Illustrator, not even in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how to create this effect. So first up, you want to create an artboard. So press Shift O to make an artboard, and you can make it really any size. I did 1920 by 1080. Typically, I just like that landscape feel, and that always works for me. So what I did is I start off with creating a background. So I'm going to press M, and I want to drag out a box. I have a color palette that I've gotten from Adobe Stock. So if you go to Adobe Color, the website. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you should have access to this and you can actually search and explore different colors through here. So if I go to explore, you can see if you type in different words, you can find different palettes and stuff, which is really cool. So find a palette that you like. Even if you go on Pinterest, you can find a color as well. So once I got the background, I started to create some shadows. So I'm going to press M again to make another box. And for this one, I'm going to make a gradient. So I'm going to drag my gradient tools out here. Make sure it's on the fill. And I'm just gonna like left click on this section here. And what I've done, I've got two of, of the gradients and you can see one color is like a dark and one is just the blue background. And then what I've done is I'm gonna reverse it. So click this little button to reverse the shadow. And I can always just tweak it like this. And then I'm gonna drop the opacity to around 30%, which is really cool. The other thing we wanna do as well is we wanna make sure that this is on a multiply. It just has a nicer effect as you can see there, which is really, really cool. I then went ahead and I select this. I'm gonna reflect it. So if you press O and hold older option and click on the top of the symmetrical part where the point is, I'm gonna flip this and replicate it on a vertical basis. And it's literally just gonna flip this square and put it on right next to it. But for this one, I'm gonna decrease the opacity again to like 10% because I just want that shadow just to have a subtle effect. I don't want it to be too much. So now it sort of creates this like fold. It could look like a folding page in the middle. Cool. Now we have to create our sort of like squares or rectangles that could represent a book. It could represent a shelf. It has sort of some mystery to it. So I'm going to press M and I'm going to draw out a box. Once again, I'll change the color so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I've made a box like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen tool to create another box. So press P and then I'm going to sort of go out like this and holding shift to do a straight line and then just go in here. I'm zooming in and then connecting like that. So now I've got this side, you can see that. And then I'm just going to do the top with the pen tool. I'm going to click this and then follow along. So we're doing this very organically. We're not doing 100% isometric, but we're sort of creating it in a way that has that sort of effect. And then what I want to do, I'm just going to adjust this, make sure the background's locked because you can see that if I go to my layers panel, you can see how everything's on one layer. So I'm gonna make another layer really quickly. So we call BG background and I'm gonna drag these and drag this to the bottom like this. So now these in the back, I can lock this. So I'm going to press A for the direct section tool and I'm just going to bump up this and this one as well just to give some elevation to that square there, which is kind of cool. And do control Y and I'm just going to bump these down like that. Okay, cool. Beautiful. So now we've got this. If you feel like it's, it's not 100%, then you can always bring this just to make it even. So what I want to do, I'm going to select each part and, want, and I'm going to make them three different colors. So one will be heaps dark, one will be like the medium blue and then one will be the lighter blue. As you can see like that. And this sort of creates a 3D type of effect. Like that, as you can see, which is looking really awesome. I'm going to make this a little bit longer that which is awesome and then what I do is I group these together by pressing Control G 
and then I'm going to duplicate it by holding Alt and Shift and just make a duplicate. Then I'll select the top anchor points, right, with the direct selection tool. So you can see the right direct selection tool. Holding Shift, I'll select these ones and these ones. And then I'm going to make this a bit taller. And then what I'll do, I'll bring it behind. So you go to Object, Arrange, Send Backward. And then just go ahead and drop that sort of overlapping behind this one like that, which is kind of cool. Beautiful. So now I'm just going to add some more shadows to give a cool effect. The best way to do this is press L for the ellipse tool. I'm going to make an ellipse. So you can see here, I've got an ellipse. And I'm going to make a gradient again. So I'm going to click on the gradient and I'm going to select the radial gradient, which is the middle one. I'm going to then also flip it with the reverse button to make sure that it's coming in from the center. I'm going to adjust my sliders here as well. And then I'm going to press control and the square bracket, left square bracket to bring it behind this shape here, which is really awesome. And then what I can do, I can scale this up, I can move the slider more and I don't want it to be too harsh. So I'll drop the opacity to maybe 50% so it's not too harsh, but I want to make sure it's seen. Maybe 70% is better. So I've got a bit of a shadow going on behind there and I can adjust this like this to make it more in a square reaction, which is great. I'll then duplicate this shape and bring it behind this square. So duplicate, you hold Alt and Shift, right? And then I can press Control left square bracket on your keyboard to bring it behind. And then this one, I'm going to scale it a bit bigger, as you can see there. And I'm also going to change this to a multiply. And I'll change the other one to a multiply as well. You can see without the multiply, it sort of looks like purpley. But if you put multiply, it see it adds it over the top of the actual blue color, which looks a lot better. And if it's too harsh, you can always drop the opacity down as well to get a subtle effect. So we've got two ellipses, two drop shadows like this. We've got our shapes here and we've got these, this background shadow there, which is looking amazing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a gradient to the top section. I'm going to drag a yellow into my gradient slider and that should add it right there. And then select the type. We want to select the first one, which is linear. So I'm just going to make sure I delete that. To delete ones, you can just drag downwards when you select the slider. Bring this like this, select the color there. And then now we've sort of got this yellow tinge. I can move the angle a bit to like 30 degrees. So now we've got sort of this yellow tinge. I've also made a lighter color here. So you can see in my swatches panel, I've got these colors. We got one and we got these two, three here and just a couple yellow. The yellow one, I can get rid of that, which is cool. So I'll drag the lighter one and bring it, make sure my shape is selected this top one and then I'll drag the lighter color here and we'll drag the make the opacity 80% just to give it a bit of lightness on the end there as you can see beautiful and now all I have to do is select this shape press I for the eyedropper and select the other shape and it should duplicate it so now we've got a duplicate of this shape beautiful looking amazing so now what I want to do is I want to add sort of this glow effect. And similar to the way we did the shadow, we're going to add this one. So I'm going to make a circle. Once again, you want to sort of make the gradient one side 0% opacity. So that's how you get the fade effect, as you see. And then this one, we want to make it the blue color, the same as the background. I'll go to my transparency panel. And then this time I'm going to select color dodge. It's obviously really harsh. So I'm going to drop it to about 30%, maybe 35. Scale it down a little bit more as you can see there. And now we've sort of got this nice glow effect. If it's not the right color, I'm going to change the color to see how it, how it looks. So I'm just trying different colors. What about the yellow one or even a white color? So you can see the difference there. And this just adds like a nice glow to the overall look. 
I'm going to make the background a little bit darker because right now it's the wrong color. So I make it the dark version. So now the glow should stand out even more. And I can put a couple glows if I want. I can even make this one a yellow glow, which would look kind of cool. See how that looks like. Drop the opacity there. Make this a bit smaller, this sizing. So you can see on the blue, it looks a bit weird, but when you put it in the right spot, it looks okay. As you can see there, the difference it makes, it makes it just pop a little bit more than usual. Beautiful. So now the finishing touches, we're just gonna make a couple clipping masks. So I wanna make a box. Hold shift, select the shape as well, and go object, clipping mask, make. So now I've got a clipping mask, and I'll make sure I bring that to the back. Boom. And then this one as well, just to clean up the overall design there. Amazing. Now I'm going to add some grain. So I'm going to press M, drag a box over everything, bring back my swatch panel i'm going to select sort of a gray color it can be intermediate like in the middle or like around this so you can see i've got a gray color so you make it light what i'm going to do is go to effect texture and grain and this is a photoshop effect so it's a raster effect i want to select grain you can play around with the intensity so you can drop the intensity make it heaps it depends it's up to you the contrast is up to you as well i like keeping it high and i sort of like this stippled effect Press OK. And then what you do is you go to transparency and you want to click overlay. And then you can see it's really harsh. So you drop it to about 30% or even less, 25%. And if you if you want less grain, just keep dropping it, you know, lower and lower. So maybe 15%. It depends on your screen. You might not be able to see it, but now you can see if I zoom in, it's got this cool like grain effect. And I can save this as just a normal image. And there we have it. That's how we create this cool, minimal design illustration. And it's really, it'll be cool for digital. You can use it as a piece of content or a thumbnail. And if you just save it for web, save it as a normal JPEG, this is the result and it looks amazing. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to making more videos. Leave a comment, hit subscribe and hit the like button because it helps me know if you like this content so I can make more in the future. This is Jeremy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.